Hello, Krina. What is endometriosis and what causes this complex disorder? So endometriosis is a, a women's health condition affecting many women in, in, in their reproductive years. Um, it can cause severe pelvic pain and fertility. And it's caused by um, essentially cells that normally line the uterus, the endometrium, ending up in um, other sites outside the uterus, mainly the pelvis. They appear on pelvic organs. Um, these cells respond to hormones, like normally happens in the, during a menstrual cycle. Uh, but at other sites in the pelvis, they can cause small bleeds, adhesions, etc. And it's those kind of deposits that can cause the symptoms that women experience, such as very bad period pain, um, pain at other times, um, and, and infertility as well. Um, we don't actually know what causes it. Um, one of the main hypotheses, and I think that's pretty well established, is that those cells appear in the, in the abdomen by a process of what is called retrograde menstruation. It's basically um, some of the menstrual debris that, that normally occurs during menstruation ends up in the pelvis. Um, that happens in a lot of women, but what we don't know is why in women with endometriosis these cells are still able to adhere to the pelvic wall and actually grow. How common is this disorder in the UK? We don't know exactly because um, um, women need to undergo surgery to actually establish whether they have the condition or not, so we don't really know in a general population, but we estimate it affects about 5% of women in reproductive age, which in the UK alone would be around about a million women. Um, and to give you a comparison, that's, that's kind of similar in terms of frequency to conditions such as asthma. So it is really common. Um, and we have no reason to believe that in other countries um, that, that sort of figure would be different. So we're talking about millions of women in the world. Can we cure this illness? Currently, the only way um, you can treat the condition is in two ways. One, through surgery, actually trying to get rid of these uh, lesions. Um, that's the only way you can get rid of the disease currently. What we don't really know is in how many women the disease actually grows back after that. Um, the other way of treatment is medical treatment, hormonal treatment. That's essentially um, a sort of lessening of symptoms. Um, but once you stop medication, um, endometriosis tends to come back. Uh, so no, currently we have no um, definite way of curing the condition. How could a better understanding of endometriosis, genetic and environmental epidemiology help us develop therapeutic options? So what we're trying to do here is um, both try and find genes that are implicated in, in um, increasing your risk of endometriosis. Um, um, we know that endometriosis can run in families, this is why we're doing that research. Um, and at the same time, we're trying to see whether those genes interact in some way with environmental risk factors. Um, we're kind of relatively in the early stages of this work, uh, but what we're trying to do is um, um, see if the particular genes that uh, increase your risk of endometriosis tell us something about the pathway of disease, uh, the biology of the disease, uh, and might give us new targets for, say, drug development. What have been the most important lines of research development in the last five to ten years in this area? So there's been a lot of work in the last five to ten years, uh, and I think um, um, as funding really has you know, increased a bit for the condition as well in the last couple of years, um, which has been fantastic, you know, we've been able to really further some of the, um, some of the work on the, on the condition. But there's still a lot to be done. So, so one of the major lines of work is trying to find out whether there are any um, what we call biomarkers of the condition that we could measure. So, for example, currently the only way that we can diagnose a woman with the condition is to, for her to undergo surgery. Uh, it would be much, much better if there could be a blood test um, for a woman to be diagnosed. Um, so uh, there's worldwide quite a lot of work um, going into that, trying to find... Uh, particular proteins, etc., in say blood um, or um, or in other uh, um, uh, other tissues that could um, distinguish women with endometriosis from those without endometriosis. That's one important line of research. I think another important line, uh, which is often forgotten, is um, is to actually show the public health impact of the condition. So um, I think it's a condition that's often 
um, uh, ignored by the public, but, but women as well, I think. And the kind of symptoms that women experience is often seen as something that's part of being a woman. Uh, whereas, um, so a lot of a lot of women suffer in silence in that sense. So trying to raise public awareness of the condition for them to seek earlier help, etc., for them to be diagnosed earlier, um, you know, all helps. So, so one study we're currently doing actually is is a global study trying to look at the impact of the condition worldwide in about 15 different centres across the world, and hopefully that will also raise awareness and, and show um, what an important condition it is in in not just. Um, uh, here in the UK or in kind of Western countries, but worldwide, basically. And my final question today is, how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? We're currently sort of at the early stages of, of what we're doing, so we're trying to still find the genes that, that are involved in endometriosis. I think once we have a better handle on that, hopefully that will tell us uh, more about the biological pathways that are involved. And hopefully that will give, for example, pharmaceutical industry some targets that, um, that they could work on for drug development. But also within a department, there, there might be other uh, departments that could help us in actually translating this into a, um, a better treatment of women, but also be maybe prevention as well, which I think would, the best, best, would be the best thing of all. Thank you very much, Karina. You're welcome.